So today I have one sewing make to share with you. Before I share it, there are just a couple things that I wanted to talk to you about. I wanted to share with you a sewing make that I made that I plan to donate. Now this is a vintage sewing pattern. It is Simplicity 7531. And I think that this top is really, really cute. I made it out of an eyelet fabric and <clears throat> it's really simple to make. It does have front darts in it. And other than that, it's really easy. You just slip it over your head and then it ties in the back and it's really adorable. So the reason I'm donating this top is because it is too short for me. And not only that, but the back of the top has your back area fully exposed. I'm actually okay with that. However, for me, once I would turn to the side, you can see my cleavage area. And I even purchased a bra to put under this with a little cute crisscross back because I thought that that would maybe help, but it didn't. I didn't like the way the bra looked under the top. I thought it looked much cuter without the top or without the bra under it. So, it's okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and donate this and hopefully someone else can find it and love it. One thing I did try to do was to pull the straps tight because I thought maybe that would bring in the sides. But once I did that, it just pulled in the front of the top and then I just realized, okay, this just isn't gonna work. I just have to accept it, it is what it is. So, like I mentioned, I will be giving this away. The next thing I wanted to mention is someone asked me a question in my comment section and they wanted to know how I record and then retain notes for each garment that I make. I thought that that was a really great question so I thought I would share the answer here. Even though I did reply to the person, I thought I would go ahead and just share it again. I keep a journal, which I think I've mentioned before. And this is just a journal that I made up in Word. So I opened up a Word document and I just created this little blank canvas. I typed in all the things that I would want to have in a journal. So I put in like the date. I don't even know if you can see this. But I put the date, the type of garment that I made, the fabric that I use, where I purchased the fabric what the pattern is, the view that I made, all the details that I would want in a journal. I just created that in a Word document. And then in the back, I just made a blank page so that I can go in and write down the information about the particular garment. And when I wanna look up something that I made, I can look in here and figure out what page that garment or that sewing make is referred to on. And then I can just open up that page and then get all the details about the garment. So after I write down all my notes and all the particulars that I want to have written down about that particular sewing make, I will take the sewing make and put a little piece of paper on it with the pattern number and the date that I made the pattern and then I will pin it to the garment and just hang it up in my sewing room until I'm ready to wear it or share it in a video. So that is how I you know keep up with what I make and keep track of all the details that I have for each particular garment. Another thing I wanted to share is learning the difference between bottom weight and top weight. I would always read things that said bottom weight and I didn't really understand what that was. So I looked it up and I wanted to share what I learned. And it was really simple. I was like, oh, that makes that just makes a lot of sense. So a bottom weight is a catch-all term for garments that cover some or all of the lower body. So these would be things such as skirts, pants, shorts, and jeans. And you can find bottom weight fabrics in fabrics such as cotton, sateen, denim, and some twill. And then as far as top weight fabrics, it would be just the opposite. So they would include lightweight fabrics that are used to make skirts, dresses, and blouses, things that you would wear typically on top. So, and of course, you know, things can change and you can move things around. You can make a jacket from a bottom weight and all of that. But at least, you know, from my understanding, that gave me a better idea of what a bottom weight is. So I thought that that was really cool I wanted to share. Now on to the details about this sewing make. 
So I have been wanting to make jeans and I was looking through my patterns and I noticed that I had a pattern from 2011, which is a jeans pattern. It says jeans and trousers on it, but the pictures on the front show women wearing jeans. So I decided to go ahead and pull out this 2011 pattern and I thought I would go ahead and make a muslin just so that when I am ready to sew jeans, which I don't know when I'll be ready to, but I wanted to go ahead and take the steps to get myself ahead of the ball game so that whenever I am ready that I will have all the particulars and all the little kinks worked out. So I'll go ahead and share some footage of me getting prepared to sew the muslin. This is an older pattern. It's rated as easy. I made this back in the day when I first, first purchased it and I remember having really good results, but I don't have these pants in my wardrobe and I don't know why or what happened to this. And I wanna do view A, which is the slim ankle length pants. And I did have this one inch hem extension added when I pulled the pattern out of the envelope. So I don't have notes from when I made it years ago, but this was already in the pattern when I pulled it out. So what I like to do just to measure the crotch area, I like to put, I like to mark my five eighth inch line from the edge. So I made this little line here, five eighths of an inch around, and also a little bit on this curved edge five eighths of an inch from the edge. And then the waistband at the top, I do five eighths of an inch there and mark that. And then I like to overlap the five eighths of an inch marks. So actually I have two here because I had to cut the pattern in some. I went from an eight to a six. So this one line is eight and one line is six. I don't know which, I think the black line is my new line, I believe. So then what I like to do is overlap the lines. So I'm gonna overlap the black lines. And so that's about right. And I'm just doing that because, you know, when you sew, you're gonna sew them together and you're gonna have a 5 eighths of an inch seam. So I'm going to kind of duplicate or replicate having a seam there. And then what I like to do is tape, take a measuring tape and I put it on the edge, you know, like say if this was the measuring tape, I put it on the edge and then I just kind of walk it all the way around from one edge to the other edge. But I start at the five eighths of an inch mark from the waistband. So I don't count the five eighths inch, I go under that and I start counting from here and I just kind of walk it all the way around till I get to the other side over here. And I usually pin this area so it won't come apart. So this is what I mean. I usually take this and I put on the one inch, I match up the one inch line to the five eighths of an inch line. And then I just kind of walk it through, you know, just kind of walk it around. So I just kind of put it here and then just kind of go all the way around on the five eighths of an inch line all the way around until I get up to the top. And then when I get to the top, I'll see what number I stopped on and then I'll know how deep the crotch is. Now, I am not an expert at fitting. I really just kind of wing it. So I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not, but this is just something that I do and it seems to kind of get me in a good starting place because it's been so long since I made this and I don't know how it's gonna fit. I purchased this 100% cotton from Joanne Fabrics and the pattern calls for either stretch woven or denim. So I think that this will work out just fine. Okay, so I am almost done with my pants. I just need to put on the waistband 
And for the inside pocket, I just used some scraps because I love using my scraps. And yeah, the zipper's in. And I didn't put any back pockets, but I did do a little top stitching. I don't know if you can see that because it's in white. But yes, I'm really happy with these so far. I may take in the size maybe like a quarter inch just because I want them to fit a little bit tighter than they do. But um, so far so good. So now I just want to share a little bit about the fabric. The fabric that I used in the video clip is gingham fabric that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics. It is 100% cotton and I usually like to use 100% cotton when I am testing out pants, a pants garment. So if I'm making a muslin, I usually go for that 100% cotton because I find that it's really easy to work with. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to measure my crotch length was because I can take that measurement and compare it to my actual true body measurement and then determine whether I need to raise the crotch or lower the crotch so that the pants will fit the way that I'm comfortable wearing them. In this garment, I actually did not have to make any changes to the crotch length. That was okay. I did go ahead and take in the quarter inch on the sides. And when I am ready to finally make this garment, I think I will go ahead and use a stretch denim fabric. And something else that I will do is I will make sure that I lengthen the pants a little bit more. Because although I did lengthen them an inch, they were still coming up a little short. And you'll get to see that when I share the actual sewing make on. Now some of the features in this pattern, there is a fly front zipper. The fly the fly front zipper is closed off with a button and then there are front pockets as well as back pockets which I think I shared that I decided to just go ahead and leave the backpack pockets off because I was just making a test garment. So I'll go ahead and show you what the finished garment looks like on. down shirt. So any shirt that buttons up the front is considered a button up shirt. Any shirt that has buttons on the collar where you button the collar down to the shirt, usually through a button, that is considered a button down shirt. So I thought that was so interesting and I wanted to pass that along. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to know you can click on the little thumb that's sticking up below.